Welcome to part 9 of the Godo 4 Dive Through the Documentation. In this video, Continuing Best Practices, we are going to be talking about scene organization. If you enjoy software educational content like this, we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to help us along. Which nodes should you use? How do they fit in the tree? Should they interact? These are things to think about. There is always more than one way to build out our game. One way, the way the new users tend to do, is to just put crap into the scene and build everything from the main scene, or whatever scene you happen to be on. But at some point you will probably feel that it's starting to become a mess, and you are left with a situation where you want to split it into smaller branches. You could do this, but what is more than likely going to happen if you try this approach is that all of your scenes depend on other scenes, despite your good intentions, and things will eventually break. The solution to this is to build scenes independently, instantiate subscenes, and leave them blind to requiring details about their environment. We talked in a previous video about coupling. This is how you avoid it. The thing to consider when making a game is, for each script or node, try to maintain a singular focus. Think, what does this class do? And how can I avoid depending on another class? These OOP, or Object Oriented Programming, Best practices have parked several implications for best practices in scene structure and script usage. If at all possible, one should design scenes to have no dependencies. That is, one should create scenes that keep everything they need within themselves. But alas, sometimes that is not possible. Sometimes a scene must rely on other scenes and scripts to do their job. This is where the concept of dependency injection comes in. Just a high level explanation of what this is. This technique involves having a high-level API provide the dependencies of the low-level API. Why do this? Because classes which rely on their external environment can inadvertently trigger bugs and unexpected behavior. To do this, one must expose data and then rely on apparent context to initialize it. Recall our lesson on signals. One way you could do this, actually, is to connect to a signal. This is extremely safe, but should be used only to respond to behavior not start it. By convention, signal names are usually past tense verbs like entered, skill activated, or item collected. You can see in this example that a coin is responding to a body entering its collision area. Also recall that you can connect these via script as well. We haven't talked about it yet, but you have seen that you can call get underscore node to get a node from the tree. Using a dollar sign lets you skip that step. Writing it this was is exactly the same as calling get node. Another way to avoid coupling would be to call a method, which would be used to start a behavior. A third way would be to initialize a callable property. This is safer than a method, as ownership of the method is unnecessary. This could also be used to start behavior. And a fourth way could be to initialize a node or other object reference. And yet another way would be to initialize a node path. These options hide the points of access from the child node. This in turn keeps the child loosely coupled to its environment. One can reuse it in another context without any extra changes to its API. Although the examples just shown on screen illustrate parent-child relationships, the same principles apply towards all object relations. Nodes which are siblings should only be aware of their hierarchies while an ancestor mediates their communications and references. The same principles also apply to non-node objects that maintain dependencies on other objects. Whichever object actually owns the objects should manage the relationships between them. And that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for making it all the way through the video. Please join us in the next one. See you next time.